everyone! Welcome back to my channel. So today I have a video that I have never done before. This is the first of its kind and that is a products that I regret purchasing or it's all makeup so I guess makeup I regret buying video. So I do tons of hauls. You guys know that I do hauls like crazy and I'm not really a big fan of returning used makeup. I just think I just feel bad returning used makeup because it's not like Sephora or Ulta can resell those products. So um, I usually kind of stockpile all the products that I don't like and yesterday I was organizing my um, Alex 9 drawers over here. I finally got little trays. They just opened up a container store here in Arizona. It's the first one. And I finally got like little trays to divide everything and like organize that mess over there. So as I was organizing, I came across quite a few products that I was about to put in the garbage, but then I figured, you know what, I'm going to film a video about it. So um, without further ado, I guess let's just get started. I have three face powders here. The first one is kind of a bummer, and I held on to this for so long, just kind of hoping that it would magically become better. But this is the Porefessional Zero Agent Shine uh, Powder. So this is like the powder version of the Porefessional. And it's supposed to be like a finishing powder, so if you use the regular Porefessional, under your foundation and then you use this over your foundation it's supposed to be like this amazing thing and I just I just didn't like it I think for one the packaging is really strange it's very hard to get product out of so you have to twist it off and then it's like a salt shaker on the top and then you're supposed to like tap it into the lid and then it comes with this itty bitty baby brush but come on who actually puts their makeup on with a little tiny brush like this so I would have to get one of my full-size brushes and then it just it became a mess and I, I didn't like the packaging of it um, the powder itself wasn't anything fantastic. I didn't find that it left my skin matte for very long. Um, it did kind of fill in my pores, but I feel like that's kind of what the primer is for. So it could be that I'm just using this wrong, or it could be that this is just a bummer. So I wasn't a fan of this one. The next powder is from La Roque, and I got this from Ulta during their 21 Days of Beauty a long time ago probably like three years ago and this was on sale so luckily this was only like ten dollars it was on a super discount but this is the Lorac Perfection Baked Perfecting Powder it's in the color light and the color was fine so it looks like this it's like a dome shaped powder and maybe it's something about the pore powders because that's supposed to be a pore powder and this is a pore powder. So maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. But I just didn't find anything amazing about this. I found myself continuing to refer back to other powders and this one just kind of got tossed to the side. I used it again the other day just to make sure I truly didn't like it and it just wasn't it just wasn't fantastic um it didn't hold my foundation in place uh, whereas other powders do like the mac mineralized skin finish i feel kind of like sets your powder this really didn't do a whole lot so kind of a bummer but this one will be either donated or going in the trash and then the last powder is from urban decay and this is their Naked Skin Ultra Definition Pressed Finishing Powder in the color Medium Light. Um, so this is not the new one. They came out with another powder foundation that they just launched just now in 2015. This one came out, I think, spring of 2014. Um, maybe a little bit before then. But it came out after the Naked Foundation. Anyways, um, this foundation was, or this powder is really good. It's not a foundation, it's a powder. Yeah, it's a pressed finishing powder. It was really good. It comes with like a little sponge. I actually kept this in my purse for a really long time. Uh, but the thing that kept getting me is the color. The color selection of this was not very good. So the color range is all very yellow. They don't have any cool tones or pink tones or even peach tones. They're all super yellow. So I just, it didn't match my skin very well. I tried to make it work, but the color was just, it just didn't work for me. So bummer because it was a good powder. All right, the next product is kind of like a finishing powder, but it's it's a little bit different. This is the Mali Beauty Evercolor Poreless Face Definer. So this is supposed to be like the clear finishing 
gel powder stuff. I don't know. It intrigued me because, so if this is supposed to be something you set your foundation with. It's supposed to be clear because selling it as clear means it's not going to change the color of your foundation. It's not going to make you powdery. It's not going to leave a white cast. It sounds really awesome. And if you watch like the QVC, um, like infomercial about this because Mally Beauty is also on QVC. It sounds amazing. Like it sounds like it's this awesome thing. They make it sound amazing. And then Ulta finally put Mally Beauty in their stores and I bought this like the week that Mally Beauty launched in Ulta. Um, anyways, it feels really cool. It's like a silicone texture. It's really soft. But it just didn't work for me. This could be another thing that maybe I'm just not using correctly. But I find it really hard to put like a gel creamy powder, not really a powder thing, but I found it hard to put on top of a foundation. I felt like it, it was hard, it like moved everything around and it left behind like weird kind of like cakey splotches. It's kind of like a glue stick consistency if that makes sense. So maybe if I used it under my foundation that would work a little bit better, but putting it on top just... It just didn't work for me. Next facial product I have had for years. I have been so hesitant to throw this away because, I don't know, it was really expensive. But this is the Urban Decay Surreal Skin Cream to Powder Foundation. And it comes in like this purple container like this. You open it up and it's like a cream foundation. Um, this was one of the very first cream foundations that I had ever purchased. Prior to this, all I used was Bare Minerals. So this is when I was kind of experimenting and trying to find foundations that worked. And this did okay, uh, but I just find that cream products like this that are in like a compact form like this, they're just really hard to apply to the skin uh, because you have to like scrape your brush in there or scrape your beauty blender in there and then put it on your face. And I just found that it, it just became too messy. It was very hard to blend and I couldn't quite apply it correctly. So I pushed it to the side and I haven't used this in probably two years. So now it's to the point where it's kind of expired and I need to throw it out, but I don't know, kind of a bummer there because this was like $30. Next one is the Paracone ND No Foundation Foundation Serum. This luckily I got as a free sample um, from Sephora, but it's like a decent sized free sample and I wasn't going to talk about it, but I figured I would anyways. Um, this was a really good product. It's the color that was off. This only comes in one color and it's really, really dark. So you can see I'm like super fair skinned and I usually have to use the lightest shade of foundation or like the second to lightest shade of foundation and this was just way too dark for me. It didn't work at all. Um, but the product itself is like a cool concept. It's supposed to be like a serum foundation. It's supposed to be kind of like the Bare Minerals Bare Skin Liquid Foundation, like the same kind of concept. But um, Tarte just came out with a found sealer is what they call it, and it's kind of the same concept. I haven't tried that one yet, but the color looks like it's going to match me a little bit better, so I'm excited about it. So I think if this came in a better shade range, I would try it again, but... Uh, until then, I, meh, I'm not going to use this. Last face product is the Tarte BB Tinted Treatment 12-Hour Primer. Um, I got this in a kit that I ordered off of QVC last year, uh, maybe the year before. And But they sell this, like, by itself now. But this was, like, the pre-launch before all of that. Um, anyway, so this is supposed to be a BB cream. Uh, the thing I didn't like about this, so the color was fine, the color matched me, I got the color fair, but it clinged to the dry spots of my skin. So I have really dry cheeks and I get really dry right around my mouth and like right under my nose. And this would just cling to those dry spots and look really cakey and really powdery. And I couldn't buff it out and, and I couldn't find a way to make it work and I tried it multiple times. And unfortunately, it's just, I couldn't find a way to make it work because of those dry spots. It worked great on the oily parts of my skin, so like my nose and my forehead, the places that get really oily, it worked awesome, but I just found that the dry spots, it just, it didn't work well with. Okay, next, I have a brightening product. This is the Smashbox Photo Op Under Eye Brightening Illuminator. Luckily, this was also one of the Ulta um, 21 Days of Beauty, like, beauty steals. So I think I got this for $10, but it sells for, 
I think it sells for like $30 or it's really expensive. But the point of this is supposed to be an under eye brightener. So it comes in like a lip gloss looking tube. And then when you unscrew it, it's like a, a brush, like a thin brush applicator. And it's supposed to be an under eye brightener. I think it did nothing. It did nothing to me. It added like a tiny bit of like shimmer. But other than that, I feel like it didn't do anything for my under eyes. It did not brighten. It did not conceal. It just was a worthless step in my makeup application. So luckily this wasn't too expensive, but this is, this is going in the trash. <laughs> then I have a blush and this is from Bare Minerals and this is a loose powder blush. So it's like a loose powder and this is in the color pink tourmaline. Ooh, I don't know. I can't pronounce it. Um, so the color is really pretty. It's like a dusty mauvey pink, which is my favorite types of blush. The thing I didn't like about this was it was really, really hard to blend. And this is the first and only powder, loose powder blush I've ever owned. And maybe it's just, again, I don't know how to use it properly. I don't know. But I just found that it was really hard to blend into my cheeks and it was hard to get on the brush it would apply to the brush really inconsistently. So then trying to put it on my cheeks, it just, it looked kind of blotchy and it was really hard to blend and I, I didn't like the way this applied. So bummer there because it is a really pretty color. Okay, next I have three lip products. So these two I can put together because they're the same, but these are the CK1 lipsticks. These were another Ulta Beauty Steel. Thank God most of these were Ulta Beauty Steels. Um, but these, I think they were on sale for like $5 or something like that, so I'm not too upset about it. These, I bought two of them because I really liked the color, but I found that these didn't really do a whole lot. They didn't provide a lot of color on the lips. They wore off super quickly, so I had to reapply over and over and over again, and they're really more of like a balm lipstick. But they're not supposed to be a balm lipstick. They're supposed to be like a lipstick lipstick. So it's just something about these. I think they have a weird smell too. Yeah, they have like a weird plasticky smell. And I just, I found myself not using these. The packaging is also kind of weird. They don't fit in my lipstick holders. And so they just kind of got tossed in the back of my drawer. And I forgot about them. So I'm going to give these to somebody who will actually use them. Last lip product is an Urban Decay lip gloss. I don't even think they make these anymore. This is the Honey Infused Lip Therapy. This is so sticky. It is so sticky. It smells like honey and I think there's honey in it which is probably why it's sticky. But it just, it was a mess and my hair got stuck in it. It just, ugh, it was a mess. So won't be repurchasing this at all. Then I have some eye products. So the first one is a gel eyeliner from the brand Tarte. So this is their Amazonian Clay Emphasize uh, waterproof liner in the color black. This product dried out so quickly. So I don't know if you can see it or not. It just dried out and it cracked right down the middle. And now it's totally dry. I can pop the whole thing out and it just dried out so quickly. So luckily I think this came with a kit or it might have been part of like a Sephora 500 point perk something or another. So luckily, ah, oh, my hair has been stuck in my earring. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so luckily, I don't think I spent a whole lot of money, if anything, on this, but it just dried out really quickly, like within a couple of months, so bummer there. Then I have an eyeshadow stick from the brand Mally Beauty. This is in the color Saddle Shimmer. This is such a pretty color. It's like a pretty, like, taupey, brownish gray color. Such a pretty color. The thing I didn't like about this is that it creased on me. So I would put this on my eye and then like rub it all over and use it as an all over lid color and it just creased almost immediately and they're not supposed to crease. They're supposed to be a creaseless like stick, creaseless eyeshadow stick and it creased right away on me. So I figured if I had to put a primer underneath of it and then powder on top of it, like what's the point? So sadly I won't be repurchasing any more of these Mally shimmer eyeshadow sticks. Okay, lastly, I have three eyeliners. So the first one is from the brand Stila, and this is their smudge stick waterproof eyeliner in the color uh, Angelfish. It's like the beige color. 
The thing I didn't like about this, so this is supposed to be used as like an inner highlighting or like a waterline color, something to like brighten your eyes, like that beige color. The thing I didn't like about this was the color. It has like a gray tinge to it. And every time I put it on my eyes, it made me look like sickly, like sickly or old. Like, is that some? It made me look like I was like aged or like sickly and it did not brighten my eyes at all. So I think the coloring is just off. There's like a gray tinge to it and it just didn't work well with my skin tone, so bummer there. Next is a Urban Decay eyeliner in the color Baked. So this is one of their 24 hour gel eyeliners. This, the coloring is just weird. Like it's gold, but it's like, it's not like a copper gold. It's like a weird, I don't know. I didn't like the color gold it was. On top of that, it has like thick, chunky glitter within the, the eyeliner itself that would then like either get in my eyes or like flake and fall on my cheeks and I've tried it several times you can see I've sharpened it and I've tried it several times and I just I didn't like it I found myself referring to different gold eyeliners over this one so I'm gonna give this to somebody who will use it more than I did alright last product or yeah last product that I regret buying is the Too Faced three-way lash lining tool um, so this is their eyeliner that has like three prongs on it and you're supposed to like dot it on your eyes and it's supposed to be a tool to help somebody who's not good with liquid liquid liner. I'm terrible with like, it's hard to say, I am terrible with liquid liner so I figured I would give this a try to help me like perfect my technique and it just didn't work. Like it's a, it's a cool idea, you know, you dot your line and then you connect the dots like those connect the dot things that you used to do when you were little. So it's a cool concept, but it just didn't work for me. I, I found it hard to connect the dots and eh, I just didn't like it. I would prefer to just use a regular liquid liner and perfect it that way. Um, so I used this once or twice and then I was just like over it and I found myself using regular liquid liner instead. So nice try Too Faced, but uh, I didn't think it really did too much. <laughs> All right guys. Well, that is the end of this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know if you like videos like this. I am constantly like purging my products and because I shop so much, I need to make space for all the new products. So I'm constantly purging my makeup stash and throwing stuff away or donating or giving stuff away. So if you like videos like this, then let me know in the comment section down below so I can continue to make them. Um, and I think that's all. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye.